Hello artists! Today I have a really fun tutorial, a step-by-step -step tutorial for a fun painting you can do by yourself or with your kids. I will leave links to everything and timestamps below, so if you want to skip ahead to the tutorial you can do that. Before, I have a couple of uh, housekeeping things. First of all, I'm on coffee. Kofi? Coffee? <laughs> so if you want to buy me coffee, you can hop on over there. Uh, I would be really grateful. It's a great way to support the channel and my videos and make sure that I create more. Also, I have a new class. It's called the Rainbow Method. It is super, super fun and it is live now for the month of February. It's on a special early bird price with a significant discount. I have a dedicated video, so check that out. Also, if you're new here, hi, welcome, my name is Irit. I'm an intuitive mixed media artist based in Austria and Europe. On my channel, I share my artsy adventures. For today's tutorial, you will need acrylic paints, acrylic markers, some applicators for paint, which I will talk about all the supplies as I'm using them, but I highly, highly recommend something like this. You can just use like cardboard or credit cards, some brushes, and also some pencils or pastels. I will be using pencils. So let's get into this really, really fun technique. Hello artists. Today is a very, very fun tutorial that I think you will love. And I absolutely encourage you to do this with your kids. And I will give you specific tips in case no judgment, maybe you're one of these people and I'm one of these people that you kind of get a bit freaked out when you let your kids around acrylic paint, which is permanent. And I think this method works best with acrylic paint, although you could probably also manage it with gouache. I know there are gouache paints for kids, so those are not permanent. There are four steps to this process that you can repeat over and over again, but it's always the same four steps. And I will show you how to do this from start to finish. So the first step in the four is applying color. You can do this step by yourself or you can do it with your kids. What I recommend is to choose the colors that you want to be. If you want to give your kids complete freedom, and of course I say your kids because I just think it's a lot of fun to do this with them, but if you're doing this by yourself, which I also do, uh, so ignore that part, but it's definitely not just uh, for kids. So you can do this part by yourself and then have them join for step two, or you can do this part with your kids. Choose colors you like and that, you know, match your decor or your kids' room or whatever room you want this hanging in. And if you know there is a big, there is a chance that it's all going to get, you know, muddy brown and you don't want that, then maybe divide it to two parts. This step of applying color, do one part with warm colors and one part with cool colors. So, you know, one part with, let's say, like all your um, pinks, yellows, and reds, and then a separate part with all of your turquoises, greens, uh, and don't let them, yellow can be on both, both teams, but this way you can probably avoid most muddy colors. So let's get to it. I'm using paper, but I have done this also on large canvases and it works really, really well. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm using the Hannah Müller Bamboo Mixed Media Paper, which I really love for this purpose. Uh, you can gesso it. I just go in. Now, another super important tip that you are going to love me <laughs> for. <laughs> Don't give your kids brushes, <laughs> just don't for this step. Uh, and actually all the steps are particularly mess free because I love painting with my kids, but I also get a bit anxious when things start to get too messy, especially if we're talking about acrylics, which you can't 
like they're there to stay once they are dry. So don't give them brushes. Use something like this. There are a ton of these different things. Uh, if these are, you know, too expensive, you can also use some credit cards. There are packages of these. Get them to wear something you don't mind destroying also for yourself and apply color like this. The important thing to keep on hand is either wet wipes or uh, paper towels or I use old these like cotton cloths diapers type of thing that uh, I have from when my kids were babies and my youngest is now eight so I kept a few and I cut them into small pieces and I use them um, instead of paper towels because I want to reduce waste so keep a few of these on hand where you can wipe these and then you don't need to constantly wash your brushes and it just makes life so much easier and you can also mix the color with this it doesn't gunk up your brushes it's really a game changer if that whole brush cleaning thing is annoying to you which it is to me so this is my preferred measurement this is one and a half inches i'm going to keep things very simple and i'm just going to put my paint directly on the paper i want these uh, bottom layers to be a little bit deeper a little bit more saturated and it'll make sense to you when you see where this is going. This is a fun, all the parts are fun, but this you kind of need to think the least and just use colors you love, that make you happy. What you want to keep in mind in this stage is to not have just like huge blocks of just one color. So it's better to have like little patches here and there um, and a lot of areas where things meet because we will need them to inspire us and our imagination later. Don't do just like, you know, a block of beige or something. If you're doing more of a monochromatic thing then still use then different shades of colors in you know like patches this is really the place to use a lot of color because we will be covering some of these areas i'm going to go in with white you can choose a different color be brave now and later we can tone things down i'm also going to add a touch of a really dark color I just find that it helps to add some depth. I find it can be helpful to avoid having things be too flat. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of black, so I added some Prussian blue. And I'm going to let this dry. You don't want this step to have too much texture because we're going to add things on top and it might be uh, more difficult. Are you ready for step two? So this is all dry and now we are in step two and this is where it gets really, really fun with your kids uh, or with yourself. <laughs> so 
Now we're going to look for shapes and I highly, highly recommend using acrylic markers for this step uh, just because they go on top of all paints and they're very uh, opaque and easy to see. You can use pencils or pastels it will work, but you know, you have to see how they go on top of paint. Acrylic markers are perfect for this step. So basically what you want to do is you can either just sketch whatever you want on top, or what works really well with kids is to let them kind of find shapes and just let their imagination run wild. So I'll just give you an example and then I'll go into my mode like this to me could be a little animal like a little face of a doggy or something can do also flowers but i think with kids to me it seems like animals and you know creatures and monsters and all these things seem to work really well because we love to look for that face you can also turn it around as you're painting and see what comes up for you. I would recommend to give your kids kind of free reign to do what they want. Uh, but if you get stuck or if you see them get stuck, then, you know, you can just choose some props, prompts. And for example, I don't know, just look for dogs or paint a little dog in each paint blob or fish or cat you know what I mean or flowers uh, and even if you find also that challenging you can just go with shapes personally I love just using ovals uh, you can also do a bunch of balloons there are a ton of options I really love the kind of kids book illustration look of this and it's it's just such a joy to paint and it's very relaxing and a lot of fun if you enjoy this kind of creative practice then i really invite you to join my rainbow method course because i teach there so many strategies that will help you just you know sit down relax paint and always have something to do uh, so I teach how to do that there and here for example I have just a row of cats uh, Lily my daughter she painted a really cute kind of uh, pyramid or just like a bunch of these creatures on top of each other that was really really cute I'll try to put some images at the end but this is step two and don't fuss too much about it because we can always go back and add things so welcome to step three and this is a step I call editing um, you can also kind of look at it as negative painting I guess you know just like painting around a shape I'm using white here because I really love that kind of crisp clean feel of it but I did the same thing also with this beautiful shade of lavender that you see on the page uh, like this blue that I'm painting on top right now and it turned out really really lovely so you can really you know go for drama and choose like black um, or something more pastel -y. whichever color floats your boat or goes with your design you can add it here you can let your kids do this if you're doing this together or i recommend <laughs> that you do this step by yourself and it also kind of allows you to edit things and you know if there is an area that you really don't like or maybe if you are brave and your kid painted a little sketch and you really don't like how it looks then <laughs> you can secretly go over it well your secret won't be yours for long but um, this is a good step to edit and it is really really relaxing that is there is something so meditative about covering things don't get too precious the more you do this the more you will kind of learn to be comfortable with this decluttering step of the painting and you know let go of what is not important and you can always go back from the beginning or from whichever step 
and kind of repeat the process. So many times I will go back and add some more color if I feel there is an area that got a little bit too white. And then I can go back with the markers, me or my kids, uh, and add more creatures or sketches. And then you can go back and edit again. So this is just an order of steps, but you can all the time go to a previous step and repeat it uh, as needed. With this particular thing, like adding white, sometimes I will go back with a second layer or even a third, depending how opaque I want it to be. I think there is something really interesting when you can see that there is like a little bit of color underneath. So it's always that balance, but I don't want it to be too visible uh, because I do like all of these white spaces. So you can see here, I chose to go with a round brush. You can try and using also these kind of silicone wedges type of things for this step. I just found here, I do need a brush for a bit more control. Um, and yes, that means I do have to wash it, but since I'm just using the one color and this step, you know, takes some time, then I just have the one brush to wash. And usually uh, it's only at the end of this step that I have to wash it. So uh, here I find it like there, there are more advantages to using the brush than disadvantages. And at some point you'll see me moving to even a smaller brush just to get uh, a bit better control over the details because I have here all kinds of like areas, you know, with ears. And don't worry if you go over things, uh, we will go back in step four, which is the last step, and you can correct these things. So here you see me just going with a small round brush just to areas that need a little bit more um, love and care. And I just find this so relaxing and so fun and you get to be immersed in colors that you love and look for shapes and make little sketches. Personally, I love that line between a sketch and I'm doing air quotes like a finished painting. I really, really love that sketchy feel. And I also really love this kind of childlike sketching. That's just what speaks to me. That's what I respond to. You can be as fancy as you want and, you know, make beautiful, more complex illustrations here. Um, this would look amazing with, you know, flowers. You can do like a bouquet of flowers. So really feel free to take this to whatever direction you want. It could even be a landscape or a cityscape where you start with color and then you sketch, you know, buildings or landmarks, whatever you want. In this step, step four is where we add details and you can go back with markers, which I like to do. And you can also go back with other materials like pens or pencils. Personally, I really love the way that pencil feels and looks and the paint that I like to use is flash paint. They work beautifully with pencil. So that's why they are my go-to paint these days. And another technique that I like to do is of course, mark making. Honestly, I feel like my brain and imagination go to die when I need to make marks. So I keep things very simple with dots and lines, sometimes circles. That's kind of it. Um, and it's a really great space filler in these areas. And I also like just sketchy lines. <laughs> so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can enjoy a few close-ups of this piece and then a couple more that I did with some alone, some with Lily, my daughter. Um, so you can see how it looks. I hope you give this a try. I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.